I am in the comms room for houses 5, 6 and 7 and up here you can see the old Ethernet switches which are Cisco 2960s with 100 megabit per second access ports which went to the Ethernet ports in the rooms. The upper switch um, had a gigabit SFP going to multi-mode fiber which then connected to the rack on the other side in the Cisco 2960 over there. But now the system is far simpler as you can see over here. The one gigabit fiber from KCOM is this black lead here that then goes into the behind the ONT and then comes out as this slightly less sheathed fiber cable which then goes into our ONT and then out of that is the ethernet cable which goes to the back of the 6L, Zyxel uh, router that KCOM provided. This is a very high end home router with 4x4 Wi-Fi and also the capability to deal with gigabit connections. Then it connects up to a pair of eight port gigabit switches, which then connects by ethernet to this bundle here, which then connects to our access points. You can see that the ethernet cables that went to the room ethernet ports are now completely redundant because there's now Wi-Fi here and this old rack can be decommissioned. This is one of the many flats within the accommodation building and you can see towards the end of the corridor is a wireless access point looking device. These are TP-Link Archer VR400 wireless routers which are rated to the AC 1200 megabits per second spec thanks to 2x2 MIMO on N 2.4 GHz as well as 5 GHz AC. Performance in the flats on average was around about 200 megabits per second, which considering that the building was densely populated at the time of testing is quite impressive really. It's time for the technical justification part of the video now. But before you all utterly destroy me for what you've just seen, I think understanding the context of what happened is really quite necessary. Now, the background is really complicated and could easily span about half an hour. So I'm going to summarise it a lot to basically say that myself, as well as third party IT companies, put bids in for proper managed wireless solutions using the big vendor hardware from the likes of Ruckus and in my case I proposed a ubiquity system. However the management budget didn't end up stretching to any of these bids and they'd already gone out and bought a load of the TP-Link archers in order to rapidly deploy wireless to the habitated parts of the renovated building so they especially didn't want to just rip those out having just bought them. What also happened is that a tree surgeon managed to break through the multi-mode fibre so that then complicated things as well. So what basically ended up happening was I set up a wireless bridge between the buildings and that was used temporarily before we then just decided to get a new KCOM gigabit line installed into this building. So then we had the KCOM gigabit line and then the selection of TP-Link arches already installed. So then the decision that the best thing to do was to finish off the job using a load, of the, a load more TP-Link arches, so there was at least consistency there, and then some new gigabit switches because using 100 meg port switches on a gigabit connection wasn't too sensible. And now for all of you who are probably saying that why didn't you just keep the Ethernet network as well and just sort of connect it up to the gigabit switches, well the management didn't want a wired Ethernet network on the site to individual rooms so therefore it was decided to decommission that. In addition they also wanted to move the network equipment out of the room in the building that it was in 
and so there just wasn't space in the new place to have a whole load of switches. So the equipment that you saw in the modern setups of the Zyxel uh, main router and the TP-Link switches are going to be moved at some point in the future so that that room that, that was filmed in can then be turned into a bedroom. IP configuration wise, I won't say exactly how it was set up numerically, but the access points are in a different subnet to the, the main DACP zone just to try and choose a little bit of security to try and reduce the risk of lazy hackers on the network trying to break into the access points. Of course, in an ideal world, you'd want to do a proper VLAN setup, but it became quite quickly apparent that that wasn't going to be particularly realistic. And actually, to be fair, in the, in the time that the setup's been up, which is actually quite a long time by the time this video will be out, there haven't been any issues with it at all. It's actually been very stable. The TP-Link archers obviously by default act as proper multi-purpose home routers with the ACP, NAT and all of that. So they, that all had to be disabled uh, to turn them basically into access points. And I can say the IPs they were given were outside of the uh, end user DACP subnet. So yeah, that's it pretty much. I mean, the switches have web UI, so obviously I have to set passwords on that, but that's pretty much just basic security practice, really. The plan is still to deploy a proper ubiquity solution in time, but we'll see. And there's also the other aspect of the other building, which is currently just using the existing Netgear Orbi solution that it's had for quite a while, which again, I also want to deal with, but because of budgets and the current lockdown. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please don't destroy me. I know what a proper wireless solution looks like, but unfortunately, given a budget, situation that wasn't possible and also for those who want the full sort of flat by flat performance breakdown across the entire site including the orbies here it is and as you can see the numbers are actually really not bad at all